I've been standing up for black trans women for as long as I've known. You know, because we know there's an epidemic of violence against black trans women in the US. And I feel like Every time I speak about the way that transphobia feels, the way that my depression has impacted my life, the way that I've witnessed firsthand trans people without jobs, without homes, without any basic respect, you're not even identified as the person that you are. I feel like cisgender people have a very hard time understanding what misgendering feels like. They just feel like, oh, um, the wrong pronouns might just slip every now and then, and I'm sorry. But like every time this gendering happens, as basic as it is, it's a complete invalid invalidation of your identity. And it's very casual. It's a very casual form of transphobia. I feel like I've been speaking about my experience for the past five years, and I, I I think people sometimes wonder why is she, why does she keep talking about how painful being trans is, about how much pain she feels in her community. And I talk about black trans women going through an epidemic of violence and I feel like people think it's a talking point that you learn at a liberal arts college or something and not a reality. Mm. Alexa then proves mm. that there is still like you know, like a, a very, you are at a, a tremendous risk just for living as a black trans feminine person. If you're homeless, if you're um, in Puerto Rico, you know, like the violence that we all speak about is real. And I'm really tired of it being treated as if it, as if it isn't. And we might not be killed, but a lot of us live feeling like we're dead. We don't even have access to identify ourselves. We lose respect from our families, from our friends. We have a hard time going to the bathroom. We have a hard time getting a job, we have a hard time building a, a life in general, and this is exponential. I think it's time to really, really integrate trans people in our societies, in our governments, in our media, in our um, health and education system. It's not a joke. It's a very real circumstance. I, as someone who is red as white, and largely white because three of my grandparents are, I have a lot of privilege. My parents have not abandoned me. I am financially supported by my father. I use all of those privilege, privileges to help other people because I feel like I have no other choice. But it's it's very immobilizing because like I don't have enough I don't have enough resources to to really help the people that I love. And it's this incredibly hopeless feeling of we might not really get where we want to go, but at least we have each other now. At least we get to create spaces in which we are not identified in ways that hurt us. And that's our basic luxury in life, is to be surrounded by other trans people and to not feel that consistent exclusion from, from everything, from language itself. Every time people say, ladies and gentlemen, they are disregarding non-binary people. And yeah, they might not be everywhere. You might not um, see trans people, or, well, you never really know, you know, whether you are around trans people or not. Um, 
we're not a large part of the population, but we're very important. I feel like we talk about the 1% a lot, right? Oligarchs in the US, millionaires and billionaires, they're a 1% that have a huge impact in the way that we live. There is another 1% of people, trans people, that are absolutely forgotten. But we are important. And indigenous societies recognize us as sacred. And I don't want to get all spiritual, <laughs> but we have a power that is systemically ripped away from us because the people in charge know that we are a threat to their power, that they have to give themselves through money, through guns, through high positions in our society. There's a reason why black people and trans people are in the position that they're at right now. And it's because they have an inherent power. And I think it's time to really center us and to not feel like they're taking up space that they shouldn't. No, space has been taken by cisgender men and women and white people and rich people. And we cannot allow society to be so homogenous. It's not the way that society should be. We have diversity in our society. There's a reason for that. And we see it in animals and in plants, like no big deal. Trans people exist, intersex people exist. And it's not fair for us to be given I'm not even going to say the short end of the stick because it doesn't feel like a stick at all. It doesn't feel like I'm given any sticks. And, and I say that with all the privilege I have. Imagine the people who are less fortunate than I am. Someone like Alexa. Did you ever meet her? No, unfortunately, I, I did not. Um, I literally leave my apartment, <laughs> and, and 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 that in and of itself, like, it's a privilege because I have an apartment. But the fact that I don't even feel like I can, I can leave my apartment without receiving some kind of violence, it does not feel good. And and we are resilient people because we are still here. And maybe this week we are like feeling hopeless, but there's a lot, a lot to do. And I want to do it. And I hope you want to do it too. I want to do it because I'm listening to you. <laughs> I know. And I'm sharing it. I, I know, I know. And I, it, no, no, no. Well, there's, there's a lot to do. Sorry. But one question I want to ask in terms of listening to it mm -hmm. is what can people who are listening to this do to do better? I think um, they need to first recognize that gender is imposed at birth. Being a man or a woman is decided for you because of the shape of your genitalia. If your genitalia is ambiguous, surgeons will do surgery on your genitalia to make it look like one thing or the other. Cis girls are given earrings without their consent when they're babies, right? You get a baby, she has a vagina, two earrings, the baby cries. Some cis boys are circumcised too without their consent. There's some babies who have genital surgery done on them without their consent and later on can grow up to have incredible trauma because of it. I think that's the fundamental thing that people need to understand. The world is not made up of just men and women. 
there is a great degree of diversity. And that's scientifically proven in human beings. And in the way that we perform gender, it's infinite. There are an infinite there, there are infinite ways of performing gender. I think um, a lot of it has to do too with uniformity. You know, like there's a reason why all men have like jeans and pants and button-up skirt. You know, like because they blend in. You're not really discriminated against if you wear a uniform. And anyone that like moves away from that is then no 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 um i think that people need to recognize that transphobia is actually very present in our lives from a young age if a cis girl is perceived as manly she will be bullied for being a tomboy that is transphobia because you're not allowing someone to be or perform their gender in a way that is different to what we expect girls to be. If what we think is a man is like standing like flamboyantly, speaking flamboyantly, we're like, oh, that's like a feminine man. And you're discriminated against because of being feminine. That's transphobia. A lot of times, when um, cis men come out as gay, their parents are like, you can be gay, but don't be a woman. That's transphobia. So basically, we are very conditioned to kind of stay within this very uniform binary to, to keep this order in balance. But it's very painful for some people to have to perform being men to get a job. I have a daughter that has to cut her hair off and wear like pants and button ups. That's not what she wants to wear. You have a, a biological daughter? No. <laughs> so my daughters are like the, the girls in my house. I'm the mother of the house. Okay. These uh, girls are young people. This is a girl that is trans, feminine, black, neurodiverse, has been at times abandoned by her family. She's been wandering around for days right. sometimes. I'm a 27 year old. Do you think I can really ha I'm not a psychological professional. I don't have all the resources in the world, but I still try my best to kind of uh, to protect these people to give them food when I can. Um, there are, I, I'm very close to a lot of young people that fit Alexa's description to the T. And I'm trying my best, but it's very hard.